Hi guys, could you introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, I'm Lydia Nicholson and this is my husband, Mike Nicholson. Yes. Wonderful. And you guys have been married for how long? 17 years. Okay, awesome. So older than many of our youth. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Look at it. All right. Um, you know, for each of you, what drew you to Jesus to, to begin with? So I would say for me, it was kind of a long, like just kind of like a long lifetime process because I was not raised in a Christian family, but I was raised in kind of like a spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. I'd say they have like sort of a spiritual aspect to things, but I always, I never doubted that there was something out there. Like I believed that there was something, some kind of God or gods or something. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to know that entity, whatever it was. I felt a really strong longing to be in communion with whatever was really out there. So um, I had friends who were Christians. And so I heard a little bit about Jesus there. And my parents, even though they weren't Christians, had a lot of Christian music. Um, they had a couple of musicals. They had Jesus Christ Superstar and Godspell, um, both of which I really liked listening to. I just really liked to hear the story. And, um, and even their Christmas music that my parents had was a lot of it you know, like carols and stuff. They had a big book of carols that we would sing. And so I had a lot of opportunities to hear about God. And I, you know, I thank God for those opportunities because I know he gave them to me mm -hmm. um, because there was that longing there. I just wanted to know. And so eventually uh, we met and we were both kind of interested in God's stuff and we wanted to go to church together. And that's where I really started learning about Jesus more formally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could tell that this was, this was it. This is what I had been looking for. So um, that's kind of a journey in a nutshell. Wow. Wow. So even growing up in a non-Christian home, you still found lots of opportunities that the story of God was kind of around and in front of you and, and that captivated you and made you want to learn more. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. definitely. That's awesome. Glory to God for that. What about you, Mike? What drew you to Jesus? Well, I actually had what I'd consider a supernatural experience. Yeah. And it's a little bit scary. I, I experienced the vision. There was a time where um, I was just in the depths of despair, mm -hmm. um, involved in a breakup with a girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, that'll put you in the in there. depths. Of, <laughs> yeah, I'll put you in the depths. And um, I wasn't raised in a Christian home either. But when I was... In the depths, I, I, I kind of experienced a vision of myself out in something like space and surrounded by a whole lot of death. And I don't want to go into too much more into that. I don't want to scare anybody, but it, it was it was a spooky situation and I couldn't snap out of what I was seeing and experiencing. And I called upon Jesus. I think I said something like, Jesus, please take these things from my sight. And I was instantly taken back to, um, to restored to a safe place, restored back to my senses, and given a, a sense of peace unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. And um, like I said, so I wasn't raised Christian. I could have called on any of the gods you might be able to name, but uh, but I called upon Jesus, and He's the one that re restored me to my senses. And mm -hmm. um, from there, yeah. I, we were experiencing church together. We were seeing the gospel in the hymnals at First United Methodist Church of Hyattsville and then uh, hearing the gospel proclaimed um, more concentratedly from some Christian leaders in our lives and yeah. that we invited into our lives and uh, came to faith in Christ. But that was the impetus. That's what started my journey was seeking Jesus. Wow. Wow. So both of you came from homes that weren't raising you to be Christian. And both of you have been drawn into this faith and, and, and chosen this and believe this. That's, that's, that's remarkable. And, and it sounds like different journeys, but uh, have braided you together, right? <laughs> Where it says that man is without excuse, creation proclaims the glory of God, mm. you know, I, I feel part of that was my experience. Like I could not go out 
side and look at the world and think there is nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, from at least that starting point, it doesn't necessarily bring you to Jesus, but it does, you know, I don't think it's really easy to deny that there's something out there. And so um, that was a good starting place for me. To go from there, there are many ways and there's an unnamed mystery to, we believe Jesus is that way. That's a big, that's a big journey. Um, And one, I think um, many of us encounter that kind of, uh, who, many of us who grow up in the church encounter that kind of thinking kind of after we're out of our parents' home. Um, but you guys grew up in that and, and kind of came the other direction. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's beautiful. It can't just be your parents' religion. You know, you have to right. look into this for yourself as you go along. So many of us at, you know, coming into high school, coming into, coming into college, that differentiation between our faith and our parents' faith that if we haven't wrestled right. with that yet, it, 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 there's a moment where, you, you you have to decide, you know, am I going to, am I going to follow this or not? So you guys picked to follow Jesus and it's been easier ever since, right? <laughs> so what, what challenges your faith, uh, my friends? So I will say early on as a Christian and still now, um, sometimes scripture mm. challenges my mm. faith, you know, looking at the Old Testament in particular, there's a lot of stuff um, you know, I came from a very liberal uh, background as well. So not just you know non-Christian, but also very liberal sort of leaning. And so a lot of the stuff you read in the Old Testament is kind of like, this isn't, this is hard to t- take. This is, yeah. you know, it sounds mean. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so learning how to read through the scriptures and understand you know, historical context, mm-hmm. genre, what is this? What am I reading? What does it mean? Mm-hmm. Um, what does it really mean uh, has been helpful, but that's still sometimes a challenge for me as I'm going through um, scripture. Just, just what, what is this? this, Some of it does not jive with what I picture God to be, you know? And so it's like, how does, how does form a cohesive picture? Um, That's one challenge for me. Yeah. Also along the same vein, uh, injustices in the world, you know, some of the horrible things that happen to very innocent people. Yeah. Um, like where I know God is there and I know God is in control, but um, that challenges me when I, you know, if I'm thinking about it late at night or whatever, it's like, it's just, it can be hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, I resonate that with that very much, Lydia. And I think the, the questions about the Bible are ultimately why I ended up you know slowly working at at the seminary degree because it was it was just questions about like how do i i want to hold this together but how there are ways to to learn how to read and better hear what's being said in the scriptures is you have to have that patience in your faith because you're not going to understand everything at first read and um that moment where you're just tempted to, to just put away god's word is uh uh, that's <laughs> that can be challenging. One of the things I've found comfort in, particularly in the Old Testament, is the Psalms that wrestle with the same questions that we wrestle with today. And the idea that God would inspire something to help us enter into that dialogue with him about kind of the toughest parts of life. And people need to realize in the faith, it doesn't automatically answer all your deepest questions. <laughs> Mike, what challenges you in your faith even today? Um, I would say today, it is um, the biggest challenge for me is interpersonal relationships. Mm-hmm. So I can be a guy that takes everything personally and mm-hmm. I can be really, really sensitive. Um, so sometimes I wish I had tougher skin about some things, but yeah, if someone is to like hurt me or upset me somehow, I really don't handle that well. Uh, I don't know if that's a maturity thing, but uh But then in the midst of that, what's going on with me and God is then I'm doubting his ability, strongly doubting his ability to pull me out of the situation or pull me out of the feelings that I'm experiencing in that situation. Um, That's that that's a hurdle for me. Sometimes I think we expect the the life of faith to get easier or or, or always that we're growing stronger in our faith. And sometimes it doesn't feel that, um, you know, what is it linear? (laughs) Is that would that be the case for you? You feel like there's seasons where you're not as strong as a, uh, and, and these things hit you harder, or yeah, how do you? How uh, do you, yeah, how do you cling to God through through those tough seasons? 
you know, uh, um, God has really blessed me with with Lydia, and mm-hmm. and a lot of times I I turn to her to to help fix me up and make make those moments better. We need each and, other, don't we? <laughs> that's yeah, good man. Yeah, that's absolutely faith is true. a faith is a group project. So uh, yeah, you guys are living that out. <laughs> Guys, what, what keeps you holding on to your faith amid these challenges? You want to go ahead? Sure. So, yeah, as we just mentioned, having faithful friends, you know, mm-hmm. to walk alongside you. And again, I feel like the Bible speaks to this where you're, you know, when one person is weak, another is strong. And so we can kind of carry each other along. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's good. That's good for us to be in these shifting uh, modes, I guess. There's a lot of things that keep me holding on to my faith. I've looked other places, you know, I, my, my sister was into Wicca for a while. We were like, I mean, witches, woo. Okay. Um, you know, we were looking at Norse gods. We were looking, we were looking around. Yeah. And so, um, after looking around, this is real, you know, Jesus yeah. is real. Yeah. And so, um, in the moments of doubt, and anyway, I just cling to that, you know, yeah. this is, I know this is true. Clinging to the good things that I know God has done mm-hmm. in my life. You know, if you can look back, it's this is where journaling can be helpful. We don't really journal, but we've made notes, mental notes yeah. of things where we've seen God show up mm-hmm. in our lives. And, you know, in the dark moments, if we can remind each other again, it's good to have friends, yeah. but we can remind each other of, we saw God do this thing. We know that it is true. Yeah. And so um, that's, I think a lot of, for me, it might be similar for him, but that's, yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. What, what about you, Mike? What keeps you holding on to your faith? Yeah, it is similar for me. Um, especially what you touched on about seeing, seeing how God has moved in your life. Yeah. Um, so as long as I need to remind myself and do remind myself about how I've experienced God's moving in my life, sometimes in miraculous ways that are just mm-hmm. undeniable. Like, like I said, when I first called upon the name of Jesus and, was restored to wholeness mm. and he responded faithfully and I, we've seen sydney miraculously healed of a health issue when she was wow. a baby wow and that was really really cool and um I, I, there's an experience i had where i was impressed i believe by the holy spirit to reach out to a relative i hadn't talked to in years mm. and um i found out that right then she was on her deathbed oh and so i i ask another relative to hold the phone up for her so I could uh, tell her about Christ, tell her about the love of Jesus. And, um, and I just know that was God moving for me to do that at that moment, like the last moment I would ever be able to. And so I remind myself and sometimes ask Lydia to remind me of uh, ways that God's shown up in a big way for us. Yes. And that keeps me, hanging on in those times where those interpersonal relationships or whatever stumbling block is in mm-hmm. the way and mm-hmm. kind of messing me up. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, man. Yeah. You, I think sometimes we, you know, speaking of the old Testament, you know, we look at Israel and like, how could they, how could they forget what God just did? Or like, why are they wanting cucumbers in Egypt? Why do they think that was better than what they're, what they're in right now? And it's, it, it, there's this constant sense of like the forgetfulness of God's people and we're not immune to it. <laughs> so that you guys like cherish these memories as touchstones that, you know, God showed up in this way and I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to that. And I'm going to remember it. That's, that's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. And I think we, we can all learn from that. All right, guys. So what is your key advice for young believers? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I would say that one of my pieces of key pieces of advice is that it is okay to not understand Mm -hmm. everything in the Bible and it is okay to be uncomfortable with stuff in the Bible, you know, ask questions and don't feel bad if you have doubts. I mean, I think, I don't know, people talk about having like this rock solid faith and like unshakable. Mm -hmm. Most people probably honestly have doubts, even if they don't admit it, they have doubts. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's okay. It's normal. It's natural. And don't be afraid. It doesn't mean you're a bad Christian. It doesn't mean that you don't have faith. It just means you have questions and it's good to look for answers to questions. Um, even John the Baptist, you know, like super faithful guy, he had moments of doubt. He sent his messengers to Jesus. Like, are you really the guy? Like, should I be waiting for somebody else? 
because he was going through a really hard time. He was in jail and was about to die. So, you know, and Jesus wasn't like, how could John not know who I am? He just gave him evidence. Yeah. So uh, Jesus, I think, consistently gives evidence when we ask for it. Um, mm. And so don't be afraid to ask. Uh, that's my first key piece of advice. That's um, wonderful. That's wonderful. It helps to have a family of, you know, believers around you too. And so you're in youth group. So, you yeah. know, you're, you're yeah. seeking good fellowship and that's, that's really good too, I think. All right. What, what about you, Mike? What's a key piece of advice for a young believer? The first part that I would say is really similar to stuff Lydia teached on, and that's to, to read your Bible, uh, stay in it and ask questions about mm -hmm. it and uh, seek, uh, a mentor, someone you can trust who's further along in their faith journey than you are, who's a, um, a good communicator and a, a, ro a robust thinker, I would hope, who who you can say, I, I don't understand what I'm reading here. Mm. And this thing I'm reading is actually making me pretty uncomfortable. Mm. Or, or say, I don't I don't see how this gels with what I read in, yeah. in, in science today or, um, or what I'm hearing from the culture. This is this is not gelling with that. Uh, can you help me to unpack this? And yeah, seek, seek mentors like that. And that'll help you a lot. I kind of touched on this a second ago, but be, be aware of how the media and culture that you take in yeah. is going to form your viewpoints. Right. Um, because it is going to form your viewpoints. Um, you want to be uh, wise about how you're taking in details. Mm -hmm. and you want to consider things deeply before forming conclusions mm. before forming opinions everyone comes to significant conclusions in life so um be cautious mm. to combat how the how your opinions are being formed by the entertainment you're taking in or the social media you're taking in um maybe if you need to take breaks from those things um fast from those things for a while um read some books and mm. um I'm, now it sounds like I'm on a tirade against technology, but let me but let me explain really um, for our younger uh, listeners. A book is a podcast for your eyeballs. That's what a book is. Sorry. Okay. Uh, That's great. <laughs> Shots fired. Great. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, you're you're dealing with a couple of luddites over here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I, I would say yeah. Um, you you want to have a a, a robust attention span. So that you can take in details so that the things that you consider in life will um, you'll consider things deeply and mm -hmm. th then you won't be quick to uh, to jump to any conclusions about this or that matter of faith. Yes. Don't as be, the, as the ints would say, don't be hasty. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, I had to throw in a Tolkien reference. Come on. Come on. Uh, it's a good place for it. it was, yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. I, I'm reminded, uh, uh, you guys speaking of this stuff that, um, I was, a a wonderful little tidbit in a, in a, in a new Testament class. And, uh, this, this, it was a believer who was teaching this class, but it was in a, in, at App State, you know, at a non-Christian school and we were doing a new Testament survey and, um, <laughs> the professor, everybody was like half asleep. The professor was like, man, he was like preaching. He was like, Christianity, you know, the, the, the people of God is named uh, Israel. You know, Israel is, is to, wrestles with or contends with God. And, you know, the, the origin of that name comes from Jacob wrestling, you know, with this uh, figure. You know, it, it doesn't really say what the figure is, but he leaves with the name wrestles with God. The idea that, he, as he put it, this, this professor, uh, that Christianity is not a faith of transaction. Like you, you just get all the answers to, to what you need. It's, it's a faith of struggle. And so the key to growing in the faith to some regard is holding on, even if it's an all out wrestling match, but you don't get that blessing. You don't quite hold, you don't really get the payoff of this struggle unless you continue to hold on to God. And sometimes our faith is going to feel like a wrestling match and that's okay. And you guys are, are providing some wonderful tips about how to wrestle well with deep things, be patient, seek counsel, continue to soak yourself in scripture and be aware of the influences in your life. Uh, those are all huge, huge pieces of advice. Um, and, and honestly, guys, I wish I had heard that <laughs> in, in my teen years, because I was one of those people who struggled with, 
with all kinds of deep questions that seemed to be, you know, was didn't seem to be an arena to ask them. And what I'm hearing you guys saying is, uh, this community of faith is certainly an arena to ask and engage these questions. So that's that's glory to God for that. So thank you for your faith, and uh, may it continue to 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 build us up, um, and we build you up, and and this uh, faith family uh, grow even closer together through our shared struggle of this faith. Uh, you guys have any parting parting tips uh, you would wish you'd say to your 16 year old self? Well, I I wish I could tell my 16 year old self that. Um that everything that I was worried about in that moment was going to mean nothing to me in, in, in a week or, okay. Okay. Yeah. and, and of course I didn't know Christ at 16. I, I was saying Jesus is everything that you're looking for. Mm, mm, wow. Yeah. 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 I don't know what I would tell myself. I guess relax. I feel like I was kind of high strong. Okay. Relax. Um, take more joy. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Take yeah. More joy. Um, because it is a joy. We do, we've just spent a long time talking about all the struggles, but I mean, it is it is a it's a joy to know God, and God loves us and rejoices in us, and so it's okay to be happy and have fun. It doesn't have to be all somber all the time. Oh so, gosh. yeah. Preach, preach. Well, th- thank you guys so much 